I had started a trip so hard that I sat down to look at that glass castle, and in my mind, I was in that thing. I ended up in that castle, and I couldn't <laughs> find my way out of it. Are you guys sure you can handle this? Are you sure you can handle the truth about LSD? Brought to you by a Foundation for a Drug-Free World? Well, I am, so I'm gonna get into it right now. Blotter. Microdots. Acid. Gel tabs. Drops. Doses. Clinical 25. Clinical 25. LSD. Acid is such a scary, scary drug. It was the craziest feeling I've ever had in my life and most uncontrollable feeling I've ever had in my life. LSD is one of the most potent and mood-altering and emotionally-altering chemicals that you can put in your body. It's made in a lab, you know, it's some kind of uh, mixture of chemicals. <laughs> what? <laughs> I know they did not just have a guy they pulled from the local skate park say, yeah, it's made in a lab from a bunch of different chemicals. Hey man, so is Gatorade. <laughs> it's basically a liquid, so you can drop it on anything. It's normally taken orally on the tongue. You can use an eyedropper, put it in your eyes, you can put it on paper, you can put it in sugar cube. Probably around the age of 12 is um, the first time I took acid. I was 13 when I first did it. About 14 years old. 15, I'd say. Took it first when I was 16. I was 18. The first person that they bring up is somebody who took acid at 12? Took it at a uh, rock concert in the middle of uh, about 25,000 people. A girl I had gone to school with, um, she said, hey, look, I have this this LSD. Let's skip school and go to a laser light show. One of my you friends was like, look, I got this. We have this. Um, we have some acid. Guys that I know take it and it makes you laugh and it's just an another thing to so do. This is so dramatic. That was it. And they gave us a little piece of paper and told us to put it on our tongue and to suck on it for a minute and then chew it up and swallow it and that's what we is did. This is the and woman that was 12? 45 minutes later, I thought I lost my mind. 12 year old, takes acid, loses mind, must be the LSD. Has to be the LSD, couldn't be that they were 12. I mean, it really takes you out of everything that you know that's real and puts <laughs> you in this very surrealistic world. I mean, your Indeed, whole world friend. is distorted to where you don't even, you can't even tell that you're human anymore, really. I mean, you hallucinate <laughs> and you think you hear things, you think you see things, and you would see oh, stuff you moving, and especially when you're trying to drive or something, and stuff going by real fast, see tracers and, and stuff like that. You know, trees waving, walls moving, stars just, you know, you know, literally falling out of the sky, people following you, people talking to you. I remember I was in the mirror and I looked at my face and my whole face was like green. So if you might, something might happen while you're taking it, you might not come back. You might be stuck on that trip. Oh God, is this you propaganda get paranoia from the 60s? Coming down off it, I mean, you think, you think really horrific things. You know, your friends hate you. People are talking behind your back. You're not eating. Almost like it makes you're you not really extra drinking, perceptive. And you're just sort of out running around with this chemical in your body for hours. It's like your muscles real tight and your back hurt and your bones hurt. Like somebody snuck in your room and beat you with a ball bat or something. Man, I tell you, taking LSD is like somebody snuck in your room and beat you with a damn ball bat, okay? Now, I get what he's saying. He's saying LSD can make you feel extremely sore. But why are we already at minute four and we have basically what look like recruits from the local, like I said, car wash or alcoholic anonymous group telling us about their LSD experiences from probably several decades ago? Hey, can we get one recent person? It was just completely beyond my control. I was just like, like a dead puppet. I got to the point where it was just a part of the social activity where I was taking it and just dreading uh, the next eight hours. Uh, dreading, okay, I have a lot of work in front of me, you know, to survive again another eight hour period of where I lose all my senses. I had a glass, like, castle in my room and I had started a trip so hard that I sat down to look at that glass castle, and in my mind, I was in that thing. I ended up in that castle, and I couldn't find my way out of it. We got acid from this guy who was visiting our college, and it was blotter, and basically what I wound up getting was not only LSD, but speed. Uh, 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 I thought this was an LSD video. 
Yeah, man, alcohol sucks, you know? One time I took alcohol, and then I took a hit of meth, and let me tell you, alcohol is just not the molecule for me. I was at a concert, and I had bought a sugar cube with liquid acid on it from a guy in, in the bathroom there. And I'd taken it, gone into the concert, had, you know, I was having a good time. And then all of a sudden, it just, it really kicked in. And I got maybe 10, 15 feet, and I just sat down in the middle of the concourse area because I couldn't move. I mean, I was, I was scared. And I sat down, and I didn't move for probably an hour and a half, two hours, because the whole world was just a blur around me. I was at a party one time, I think I was about 15 years old, and this guy had taken two hits of acid, and he never came back. Like, they literally had to put him into a psych ward because he never came back. I love how they don't even bother to mention that these people may have predispositions to schizophrenia or other type of mental disorders. It just is going to be continually propagated the false narrative that you could take LSD without a predisposition to certain mental health conditions and just slip into the shadow realm for the rest of your life. Me and my friend, uh, we had took some LSD one night and I don't know, we took five or six hits a piece and we, we was both way out there. and. I had a sheet where I was selling his ass, which is 500 hits, and he got wild and bit into the corner, and bit the whole corner out. It must have been 30 or 40 hits. Well, he went crazy, and they put him in a hospital, and uh, like I went to see him and stuff, and nobody could talk to him. Every time you asked him a question, he'd sing a song out of a rock and roll verse. This has been 20 years ago, and still not to this day, he, he's not right. He's not the same person. I mean, I haven't taken ass in seven years, and uh, I still feel these effects. Uh, this is the time local time Christian where, pastor. This man has not taken LSD. Totally spaced out, or this in is a the part of the Christian rock band. Ill at ease, unable to concentrate, or you know, things seem superficial. It's taken me years after it just to undo the damage. So LSD just takes you backwards. It closes doors <laughs> for you. It just affects your life. I love how all of these people or at least in the documentary, they don't even mention the horrific circumstances that people took the LSD in, the immaturity of the people, the fact that the people knew nothing about what the effects would actually be, and then them completely resisting the experience or being in a terrible environment. Like, <laughs> this, is, this is basically a rule book of how to not take LSD. One person is basically, basically like, oh, yeah, I strapped meat to my body and jumped in a great white shark tank and I was on LSD, so LSD just sends you backwards, you know? It just, it just sends you backwards. If you think that LSD is going to expand your mind and give you new insight on things and and give you a different outlook on life. It doesn't quite do that. It literally, it literally cooks your brain. Oh, uh, it literally it cooks your, your brain. It alters your senses, but in a very harmful way. <laughs> it literally it cooks your if brain. If someone asked me, should I take the drug? I would tell them it's your decision because everything that you do is gonna be your decision. But I would definitely not recommend doing it. Talk to some people that have been in your shoes before. Um, it's. It's nowhere but down. It creates the nowhere worst effect on you as a person than any of the other drugs. I've never had uh, heroin, meth. That I, I can't really. It's hard to put into words what it does to you, but it's horrible. I mean, it's horrible. Every time that you take that drug, it's like playing Russian roulette with your life because <laughs> with you never your know life, if you're gonna make it out, okay. Oh. <laughs> These are what the kids are being educated with. <laughs> the truth about LSD. I want to thank the Foundation for a Drug-Free World for providing purely factual information in that documentary. But most of all, I'm extremely glad that they gave the full picture. I'm glad that they weren't trying to use fear or over-exaggeration or debunked myths or, you know lies. I'm, I'm glad they didn't do that too much, you know, because that would have really been a bad way to educate kids about drugs. Hey, maybe instead of doing that, what you do next time is you give kids both sides. Have them talk to people or have them see people who have had terrifying experiences on LSD. You can find them. You will find people who, even prepared, went a complete different direction on LSD that they did not enjoy. 
and who do not take LSD now for those reasons. You'll find people who are still sorting through personal trauma that came up on LSD or dealing with a variety of other issues that come up uh, after a high dose psychedelic experience. But, but <laughs> they didn't interview with single person who experienced the benefits of these substances. Oh, thank God they have some testimonials. I started hanging out at strip clubs, casinos, and became very promiscuous, visiting brothel after brothel and soon to be introduced to other drugs. Next quote. I had now lost all my inheritance and had to move into a crack house where I stayed for a year watching people die, losing my business, and becoming a thief. Now, this is under the tab International Statistics about LSD. Oh, another beautiful quote. I ended up homeless and on the streets living and sleeping in a cardboard box by the train station, begging and struggling to find ways to get my next meal. I'm sorry, but I think homelessness may be a multivariate problem with more than one initial cause, maybe? Now, that's not to say that somebody with a predisposition to mental health conditions can't be radically altered by powerful LSD experiences, especially chronically, but to paint the picture that LSD equals moving into a cardboard box or a crack house does nothing but discredit this organization for any information that they could have actually helped kids with. So, let's keep going here. Uh, what dealers will tell you. <laughs> when teens were surveyed to find out why they started using drugs in the first place, 55% replied that it was due to peer pressure from their friends. They wanted to be cool and popular. Dealers know this. Now that's important. Yeah, if you're considering doing a substance mostly from peer pressure because you want to seem to fit in with the rest of your friends, don't do it. For two reasons. One, have some self-respect for yourself. You don't need to do what everybody else is doing. Don't be a conformer. And two, honestly, if you force yourself into any psychedelic experience, you're only making the chances that it's going to go really, really south very high. Very high. So let's, let's hear what dealers will tell you from the Foundation for a Drug-Free World. They will approach you as a friend and offer to help you out with something to bring you up. <laughs> what year was this written? The drug will help you fit in or make you cool. Drug dealers, motivated by the profits they make, will say anything to get you to buy their drugs. They will tell you that taking LSD will expand your mind. And this is where they lose me, because they could write a very coherent story here about how drug dealers manipulate people to get substances, about how many substances that are purchased as LSD are actually fake. They're not actually LSD, they simply pass the indole test because they're structured similarly. So that could be emphasized here, but instead they try to convince you that LSD cannot expand your mind and this is only something that a, a drug dealer would say to you rather than saying look if used correctly or if used by people who are in the right context and have the right mental health conditions for this it can arguably do something that some people would call expand your mind and what we would do by telling kids this is actually gain their respect because they would say Oh, well, there's both sides to this coin. You're not trying to just convince me that a, a drug dealer from apparently 1985 is going to come up to me and say, hey, this will make you cool. They don't care if the drugs ruin your life as long as they are getting paid. All they care about is money. Former dealers have admitted they saw their buyers as pawns in a chess game. This is just so corny. This is just so corny. I, all of this is... All of this has a modicum of truth that drug dealers are primarily motivated by money, primarily interested in making the most profit possible and can be very deceptive, but <laughs> instead they write this tacky little article up about it uh, with these horrible quotes from Brian at the bottom who says, I would tell anyone even thinking of taking LSD to reconsider. Thank you, Brian. But no matter what form it comes in, LSD leads the user to the same place, a serious disconnection from reality. LSD users call an LSD experience a trip, typically lasting 12 hours or so. When things go wrong, which often happens, <laughs> I, I just love, these are the biggest, like, <laughs> these people would give you the worst trip ever if they ever found you tripping. When things go wrong, which often happens, hey, citation needed. <laughs> citation needed. Maybe if you're 12 years old, uh, hitting the crack pipe and <laughs> doing some LSD like these people in the previous story, yeah, it's gonna go wrong, guaranteed. But it's by no means always going to go wrong. <clears throat> it is called a bad trip, another name for a living hell. 
a bad trip is not inherently an experience directly from hell. There's many gradations to this experience that you might call bad or negative. It can be uncomfortable body feelings all the way up to panicky, um, anxious thinking all the way to I'm going to die right now. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Okay, so this isn't just living hell the second you notice that you're a little bit uncomfortable, which I'm sure they would love you to believe. Oh, this is beautiful. The truth about drugs. Drugs are essentially poisons. The amount taken determines the effect. I hate to break it to you, but any molecule taken in an excessive quantity will act as a poison in your body. Many people, chemists included, often say the dose makes the poison, and that is completely true. It's completely true to say that the dose makes the poison. Too much milk will kill you. Too much rice will kill you. Too much sugar will kill you at once. Too much cannabis at once will kill you. Although that's an absurdly high amount of cannabis. Um, a small amount acts as a stimulant, speeds you up. A greater amount acts as a sedative, slows you down. An even larger amount poisons and can kill. This is true of any drug? <laughs> what? How is... Can they get one pharmacologist who's at least a square and will help them out here? Because these people are embarrassing themselves. A small amount acts as a stimulant. You can't just take anything you're classifying as a drug and say that any small amount will act as a stimulant. What are you talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about? But many drugs have another liability. They directly affect the mind. They can distort the user's perception of what is happening around him or her. As a result, the person's actions may be odd, irrational, inappropriate, and even destructive. Even destructive. <sighs> Drugs block off all sensations, the desirable ones with the unwanted. So while providing short-term help in the relief of pain, they also wipe out ability and alertness and muddy one's thinking. I love how they're just applying this to people who take prescription drugs, people who take all kinds of needed substances for their daily life and their daily activities. Um, I love that. Medicines are drugs that are intended to speed up or slow down or change something about the way your body is working to try to make it work better. Sometimes they are necessary, but they are still drugs. They act as stimulants or sedatives, and too much can kill you. So if you do not use medicines as they are supposed to be used, they can be as dangerous as illegal drugs. Well, thank God the Foundation for a Drug-Free World has decided which drugs hurt me and help me. I'm so glad that they, are, they have access to our inner experience where they can actually just tell that we're not getting any benefit from this. I'm so glad that they have discovered telepathy. The consequences of drug use are always worse than the problem one is trying to solve with them. The real answer is to get the facts and not take the drugs in the first place. Thank God that the foundation for a drug-free world is giving us the facts. I'm so, 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 so glad at all of these citations on this website. I'm so glad at that. I'm so glad this isn't just, you know, cultural opinion and stereotypical uh, references to drug users. I'm so glad that this is the truth. You know, we finally got the facts, the facts, the facts. Why would you even study pharmacology? Why would you even study psilocybin therapy? Why would you even study MDMA therapy if the Foundation for a Drug-Free World has already figured out for you that they don't help you, silly? They're saying it doesn't help you, so don't take it. Don't take it because they know what's best for you. They know what's best for you. Oh, oh make sure others get the facts. Oh, they have booklets. Maybe I'll save that for another episode. I would love to read their very informative booklets. You know what, guys? Uh, this is probably going to bring an end to the video, but they got me. I'm done taking LSD. They have made so many compelling, rational, and scientifically based arguments that I just can't take this, this substance anymore because, like they said, drugs are essentially poisons. Thank you. Thank you that drugs are essentially poisons. All right. Um, I'll, I'll definitely keep that in mind, that all drugs are essentially poisons, despite the fact that the poisonous character of something is completely based on the quantity of the substance that you take in. Doesn't matter. It's essentially a poison. The Foundation for a Drug-Free World says so. And so for that very reason, I'm done taking LSD, and I hope you guys are done too. I hope you learned a lot from this video about how dangerous drugs are and how we just should not ever ever, even in a safe context with a trip sitter and, um, you know, a, a preset of your intention, 
we should never do that because they told me that I think drugs are a solution, but they're the problem. So, all right, guys, I guess I'll see you later. This is turning into a Christian channel now. I will not be doing substances anymore. So hope you guys enjoyed this and I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.